So there is a reason I am not a fashion influencer trademark. That reason mainly being I don't own a lot of clothing. But if for some reason you are still interested in seeing the same circa five outfits I wear in literally all of my videos, like up close and featured, then by all means watch on for what is basically just going to be some unashamed Tweedy Edwardian witchery. Herein I shall be giving you all the details I care to give you about these garments. If you do not know me, hello. Ethical and sustainable fashion is a huge part of my lifestyle and I am vehemently against fast fashion. In fact, as of about 2018, I have sworn off purchasing any new garment I cannot confirm was produced through fair labor practices, which means I don't really buy a whole lot of clothing. Not because there aren't sustainable brands out there, and I will be dropping those names wherever I can throughout this video, but because overconsumption of new material is the number one most harmful practice in trying to fight fast fashion to begin with. I just don't need a huge quantity of clothes. Therefore, I must make the disclaimer that some of these garments you are about to see are fast fashion and were purchased unethically, but were purchased at least five years ago before I began doing this research. So this video is not to shame anyone for owning items of fast fashion, Trust me, I was right there with you until I started learning about the issue and exploring alternative solutions myself. But more on this at the end of the video. Basically, this is to say that I will not be giving brand names for these fast fashion items since I don't want to promote the purchase of them, but they exist in my wardrobe, it would be more harmful at this point to get rid of them, and I've included them in this video simply to serve as inspiration, should you want to make something or perhaps look for something secondhand similarly. Before we look at clothes things though, I must first take a moment to thank our sponsor for today's video. Video, our lovely aromatic friends at Function of Beauty, purveyors of personalized hair care products suited specifically to your unique hair needs. It's not often I accept brand deals for actual physical products since, you know, consumerism and stuff, but as a practical household item that also happens to be extremely fun and customizable, comes in 100% recyclable packaging and post-consumer material containers, are also free of all those parabens, sulfates, toxins, and are vegan and cruelty-free, I can wholeheartedly and Endorse. I've been using their shampoo, conditioner, and hair mask products for a few months now and have been really enjoying them. You can get a set of these products formulated specifically for you by filling out the quick two-minute quiz outlining your hair types, goals, personalized preferences, and even to choose your color and fragrance. Oh, and you also get to put your name on it so your housemates know it is especially yours. I'll put a link in the description box below for 20% off your first order if you are so interested. As a general foundation layer for all things I wear, I am always wearing some form of stocking, and the camisole that I adopted in ye olden days when I wore my scoliosis brace, because we all know that it is a mortal sin to wear foundational corsets against bare skin, and now I cannot function without. These items are both unconfirmably ethical, but my current collection of these items are pushing probably over a decade or so now and are still going strong, so I haven't needed to buy new. These are garments I will patch and mend endlessly since they're not seen apart from the calf portion of the stockings, and so long as they are wearable, they are doing their job. Outfit number one consists of an unnamed fast fashion blouse, a simple circle skirt made by me, shoes which are my absolute most favorite pair of all time, the Londoners by American Duchess Historical Reproduction Footwear, pen nib earrings from an independent jeweler on Etsy, and this pair of probably vintage wire spectacles that I bought on Poshmark, the secondhand clothing reselling app. Do be careful on there though, as they do encourage people to get entrepreneurial and open boutiques, basically of new wholesale mass manufacture clothing produced specifically for retail on Poshmark, so do be sure that you are buying actual secondhand from independent sellers if you do have a browse on there. In the outerwear department, I've got my black reproduction Victorian coat that I made myself and then remade here on this channel. Coats, personally, I find so satisfying to make. I have so many coat sewing plans in future, it's kind of unhealthy. Ravenclaw scarf, which of course I own but is probably fast fashion, and also unfortunately supports the Harry Potter franchise, which debatably may or may not be a good thing nowadays. The gloves I bought at a flea market, but I suspect were more modern and more fast fashion-y than is probably good. The hat I also bought at a flea market here 
here in New York City and is probably quite old given the amount of visible handwork on it, so I do make an effort to treat this with particularly good care. Outfit number two, once again, unnamed fast fashion blouse, although impressively, this one is 100% cotton, unlike my other polyester ones. That's another tip. Natural fibers are generally much more environmentally friendly than synthetics, so even if you do have to buy fast fashion, buying natural fiber will be a slight improvement. Yes, cotton isn't great. The industrial mass production of especially non-organic cotton is actually quite harmful to the environment, so 100% organic cotton is ideal, but but general cotton is still better than synthetic plastic fibers. This is a gorgeous kilt I had custom made by an independent kilt maker's shop in Inverness a few years ago, and it's made from a beautiful 100% Scottish wool. So this one was definitely a very special addition to the wardrobe. I think it's the only custom tailored, custom tailored not by me, piece that I currently own, but I hope to change that when I do need to start acquiring some new clothes, and if I don't have the time to make them myself. The blazer is so unfortunately also unnameably fast fashion, and I so wish I could say otherwise. It's one of my most favorite items in my wardrobe, despite the fact that the proportion isn't exactly right for me, but I wear it all the time and have been repairing it incessantly for years. I would actually really love to take this to a proper tailor and have a similar one reproduced in a nicer material, and that actually fits me, but that'll require a bit of saving up first. I'm opting for red stockings with this one. Yes, when it is cold outside, I do layer stockings over my foundational tights layer. The mock ghillie shoes are, I believe, also unfortunately fast fashion. For outerwear, I've got this amazing wool cape that I found secondhand in Edinburgh a few years ago, and let me tell you a thing, swooshing past those berobed Harry Potter street tour folks in my glorious actual cape and beholding the looks of absolute wonder on their faces quickly became my new favorite hobby. 10 out of 10, highly recommend everyday capes for literally everything ever. And I most definitely have plans to take a pattern off of this and make another one in black, so feel free to peer pressure that into happening faster. I've also got, of course, my deerstalker slash witch hat bonnet thing that I made, which yes, by the way, is Professor McGonagall's Quidditch tournament wearing hat thing because, oh my god, it's just too fabulous not to own. And a wool tartan scarf that I bought secondhand on Poshmark. We're going for the supreme Victorian vibes with this next look. I've got this, again, unnamed fast fashion blouse, which looks beautiful but that I don't actually wear too often because it is 100% stretch polyester lace and is supremely hot and uncomfortable. It's also a freaking 2010s crop top, so I actually safety pin the front and back bottom edges to my camisole to prevent it from riding up past my waistline. I know I just ruined all the glamour for you, but here we are until I can get my life together and make some proper Edwardian shirtwaist blouses myself. The skirt is my Lady Sherlock walking skirt, made of course by me. I actually wear this skirt all the time now, especially in the winter since I can stuff layers and layers of petticoats under it and stay so warm. Plus, it has massive pockets for carrying all the snacks. So more walking skirts is definitely on my list of things to make more of because these things are real heckin' comfy and real heckin' adorable. I need to cover up the arms because one, the sleeves on this blouse are unsatisfactorily to my taste 1970s, but also because I hate showing my bare arms, so I'm adding this shawl thing that was kindly given to me by a friend of a friend of a family of a I don't even know, but it's pretty and it's probably modern, only a few decades old at most. Once again, I am wearing my Londoners because they are my favorite and also because there's not ever any harm in repeating good items, like literally not ever.
For old time's sake, I'll pair this with my Lady Sherlock Ulster coat, which is, again, made by me out of natural fibre materials from an actual 1895 pattern, as you may or may not have caught the making process of right here on this channel. The coat is so warm and comfy, I actually love it so much and wore it pretty much every day this past winter whilst my black coat was out of commission for reconstructing. Look number four is one of my favorites, purely because I feel naturally just more comfortable in black than in anything else. Once again, unnamed fast fashion blouse. They're all kind of the same style, can you tell I bought them literally all at once and this is like all I wear for the present time until I can make some new ones. This is paired with a skirt I bought second hand. It's 100% silk, although I think the lining is polyester, which means that it is so warm and is one of my go-to skirts for winter wear. Silk traps heat like nobody's business, in case you needed to no. This glorious necklace was purchased by a circa 17-year-old goth trash Bernadette from a literal Halloween store, and I'm not gonna lie, I still wear it. The cardigan is also fast fashion, and the shoes are once again from American Duchess, the Gibson style, the laces for which I've replaced with silk ribbons because hashtag aesthetic. These, along with my Londoners, are made from genuine leather, and I will actually get on a soapbox about this because I'm as vegetarian as the next non-animal eater, but vegan leather at the moment is literally just plastic, the manufacturing of which is extremely toxic to the environment and produces shoes which last a fraction of the time. So while one pair of well-crafted leather shoes will last you a lifetime, you'll need dozens of pairs of plastic leather shoes to cover a similar time span, which, if you think about it, actually hurts more wild life in the end than the leather required for a single pair of shoes. Sadly, the magical pineapple leather options you may read about are not commercially viable at present, and I have this from the shoe manufacturers themselves. So I know, it sucks, and you're welcome to disagree on a moral ground with me on this, but personally, I like to think practically about the materials I'm willing to consume. Wearing wool, for example, is so much more environmentally friendly than wearing poly wool, which again is literally just plastic fibers that shed into the environment, into the water, water supply, and well, there's an article linked down below about how wool farmers are now literally just composting the wool they have to shear from the sheep to keep them healthy because selling it would actually earn them less than it would cost to transport it to cloth manufacturers. And this makes me so deeply, deeply sad because guys, think of all the tweed. <sighs> okay. The final look I have for you today is also one of my favorites. Okay, I love all of these outfits. The blouse is once again fast fashion, and the skirt is again one I made myself. I think if I'm honest at this point, a skirt has to be really particularly impressive for me to actually buy one, since I found they're actually really, really easy to just make myself. This one is literally just a circa two yard strip of fabric gathered down into a waist size strip of fabric and with a bit of ribbon stitched on at the hem. The cardigan is also fast fashion. The shoes are, once again, American Duchess, and these are the Birdie style. I'll spell that for you on screen since I can't consonant that properly in American, and I've once again just replaced the ribbon tie that it came with with my own red silk one. And of course, we are not properly equipped for our impending hypothetical library outing without a good leather satchel. This one is from Bera Bera, which is a small company I have recently just fallen in love with. All their products are handmade by a family-run traditional leather craft workshop in Bolivia, and this is probably the most quality item I have ever owned. I love it so much. This is not sponsored, by the way. None of the brands I have mentioned here in this video were sponsored except for Function of Beauty, obviously, because I said that. So therein lie my five most worn outfits. I do have a couple of dresses that I wear occasionally, but on the average given day, I'm probably wearing some combination of these, as you've probably already seen if you spend any amount of time on this channel. So I just wanted to make a point about sustainable clothing practices because I have in the past had a number of comments on some of my more fast fashion oriented videos about how, well, not everyone can afford ethically made clothes, etc. But here's the thing, nobody has ever throughout the entirety of history been expected to own the quantity 
quantity of clothes that fast fashion allows us to accumulate today. Unless you're like Mary Antoinette, Queen Elizabeth I, obscenely wealthy. Personally, I have made the decision to own less clothing but spend more money on quality and more time on making things myself. That being said, I am extremely fortunate in that I already have a very distinct idea of what my personal style looks like. I know exactly what color palette I'm looking for, how I want my clothes to fit and feel, but sometimes you really do need to take a bit of time to do a bit of experimenting and find out what your personal style is. And unfortunately, that involves trying lots of new clothes. There is nothing wrong with that, because the good news is the amount of clothing that already exists in this world is staggering. I should also point out that we are not about to wake up and single-handedly fix fast fashion tomorrow, especially us as consumers. The issue goes far beyond what the single consumer is capable of having an individual impact on. Fast fashion has become such a deeply rooted part of society, there are physically no other options than to buy fast fashion in some circumstances, whether through lack of awareness or knowledge of the deliberately obscure manufacturing process, or through the broader issue of fast fashion consumers not being paid living wages themselves and therefore relying on fast fashion to stay clothed. So abolishing cheap clothes isn't going to solve the issue. The issue is more fundamentally that workers need to be paid living wages. However, the one thing that all of us can do right now actually happens to be the single most important consumer controlled factor in fighting fast fashion and also happens to be the most affordable option. Buy less! Make an effort to mend and preserve the clothes that you have, to refashion them into something new when the fancy takes you, to buy secondhand or trade with friends when you want to buy something new, and to really only commit to investing in new items when you know it's something that you'll really need to have for a long time. Let's not give manufacturers a reason to abuse their factory workers with unlivable wages in an effort to produce products that you'll want to buy new for cheap three months later. You have that power and it is so impactful. And that goes for everything. Fashion is only the tip of the iceberg. It's only the one particular niche of manufacturing that I have bothered to do in-depth research into. I'm almost certain that the same out-of-sight, out-of-mind exploitation of labor is happening in the departments of electronics, in home furnishings, in trinkets and toys and gifts and whatever. I think the thing that we need to learn in this hyper-consumer-oriented industrial age that is spiraling out of control today is this. Buy what you need, when you need it, but be conscious of what you buy and how much you buy. Anyway, thank you for coming to my TED talk. I hope maybe this was informative a bit as well as perhaps a bit inspirational. I do have a few new items in mind for things I'd like to make or alter, so I will be putting out a couple of more everyday wardrobe sewing videos in the coming few months as I complete those projects. As usual, there will be some interesting links and references and further reading materials linked down below if you are curious to do a bit more exploring. Otherwise, I shall perhaps see you anon with some more sewing adventures. Oh, and I know I rampaged for ages on the actual fast fashion issue of things in this video, but still important is this. Dress however gloriously, wondrously, eccentrically you want and be your full, weirdest, and most wonderful self at all times. I promise, life is so much more fun that way.